Hey guys, welcome to the 21st lecture of the DIP series. This is Anushri Kariski and today we are going to look at frequency domain filters. Now when we studied spatial domain and when we looked at the filters, the process was relatively simple. We had an input image, we would apply the mask on it and then we would get the enhanced image. And that enhanced image was convolution of the input image and the filter or mask. So this process was relatively easy, but that is not the case with frequency domain. In frequency domain, when we get our input image, we need to first pre-process it. And then we need to use Fourier transform or DCT or some other kind of transform. This is done so that we convert the image from spatial domain to frequency domain. You see, when we get our question, the image is in spatial domain. So first we need to convert it to frequency domain in order to apply some sort of mask or operation on it, right? So that is why this is done. Once we have converted the image into the frequency domain, then that is when we use the filter function, which is h of u comma v. Now initially, our filter function is h of x comma y, okay? So that means that this is also in the spatial domain. So first, this needs to be converted with the help of DFT or DCT into the frequency domain so that we get H of U comma V. Okay, and then this is the one that we use. So once we have our filter function, also known as the transfer function, then after that we do the convolution. So you can see here, f of u comma v convoluted with h of u comma v. Now one major difference while doing the convolution is that in spatial domain we place the mask on each and every pixel. That is suppose we have our image here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, suppose this is our input image. So in order to do the convolution first what we did was we did some sort of padding right maybe zero padding or pixel replication we did this so that we don't lose the edge pixels during the operation and then once we did that we had our mask our 3 by 3 mask right and then that mask we placed on each and every pixel first we placed it here Okay, we multiplied the corresponding values and then we took, took the sum of it and then we placed it at this position or the output position. But that is not the case with frequency domain. In frequency domain, we do pixel by pixel multiplication. That is, if this is our image, our input image and this is our mask, we multiply this with this and that we place it here this with this and that we place it here and so on so it's pixel by pixel multiplication and then once we get the enhanced image it is converted back to the spatial domain okay so you can see here g of x comma y is the enhanced image of the spatial domain so that is converted back with the help of inverse Fourier transform or inverse dct which one or, or whichever you have used so this is how the operations are done in frequency domain Now let's look at again the basic steps for filtering in the frequency domain. First we have our input image on which some pre-processing is done and then Fourier transform is applied to convert it into the frequency domain and then we have the filter function h of u comma v which is convoluted with the input image or the Fourier transform of the input image and then it is converted back into the spatial domain with the help of inverse Fourier transform and post-processing and that is when we get our enhanced image in the spatial domain. Now let's look at these steps for solving a question in more detail. First step is multiply the input image by minus 1 raised to x plus y to center the transform. Now when we have our input image it is of this form 
okay zero 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 one zero two one zero one one and so on okay so now uh, in this the origin lies over here at this position right so we need to bring that origin to the center so that is why when we do the step multiplication of the input image by minus 1 raised to x plus y where x and y are the coordinates then we bring this origin to the center so that's why uh, it is converted into this form okay where you can see the origin 0 comma 0 lies at the center so once this is done we compute f of u comma v the dft of the image from the first step okay after that we multiply f of u comma v by the filter function h of u comma v now how do we get this h of u comma v that is something which we look at later on okay but then for now here this step basically means the convolution of f of u comma v and h of u comma v is done okay after that we compute the inverse dft of the result and then we obtain the real part of the result in step 4 so this in by getting the inverse dft in step 4 we obtain the real part okay and then after that we multiply the result in 5 by minus 1 raised to x plus y so what what is happening here is that once we get the real part then again we need to take the origin back to the original position so that is why it is multiplied the result is multiplied by minus 1 raised to x plus y okay now let's look at the different types of frequency filters the first one is smoothing frequency filters these are also called low pass filters why do you think they are called low pass filters because they allow only lower frequencies to pass through okay suppose we have a signal here so what these filters do is that they remove the high frequency components okay suppose uh, this is 4 minus 4 so they would remove higher frequency components okay and allow only lower frequencies to pass through okay and that is why they are called as low pass filters these are used to smoothen the image as they allow only lower frequency components to pass through okay that's why they are also called as smoothing frequency filters and then these are used to remove noise now noise is mainly part of the high frequency components and that's why they are used to remove the noise now the different types of low pass filters are ideal low pass filter butterworth low pass filter and gaussian low pass filter now let's look at ideal low pass filter first okay the formula for which is h of u comma v is equal to 1 or 0 1 if d of u comma v is less than or equal to d naught and d of u comma v is greater than d naught then it would be 0 now what is D naught here? D naught is the cutoff frequency. So remember how we saw this signal here, right? So this four is the cutoff frequency. So this is D naught here. Okay, this value would mainly be given in the question. Okay, the D naught value. So D naught basically tells us that after which frequency it is going to truncate or remove the frequency components okay because that is the cutoff frequency and after that frequency it won't allow uh, those frequency components to pass through now what is d of u comma v it is the distance between the points u comma v from the origin okay or from the center so if this is our image then these are u comma v one by one we will go on with all the coordinates and d of u comma v is the distance between this and this okay so you can say it's mainly the euclidean distance between every point 
from the origin okay so that is d of u comma v and this is ideal low pass filter now let's look at butterworth low pass filter the formula is h of u comma v is equal to 1 by 1 plus d of u comma v by d naught raised to 2 raised to n where d naught is the cutoff frequency and n is the order of the butterworth filter now both d naught and n would be given in the question okay and d of u comma v you have to calculate uh, the uh, using the euclidean distance formula okay next is gaussian low pass filter formula for which is h of u comma v is equal to e raised to minus d square u comma v by 2 d naught square where d naught is the cutoff frequency now let's look at sharpening frequency filters these are also called as high pass filters i think you know why these are used to sharpen the image as they only allow high frequency components to pass through okay so they remove the lower frequency components and allow only the high frequency components to pass through and then these are used to remove background of an image now you see when we have our image the main object in the image is usually of higher frequency okay so this is usually this part is mainly of higher frequency and the background is of lower frequency and that's why with the help of sharpening filters sharpening frequency filters we remove the background of an image now the different types of high pass filters are ideal high pass filter butterworth high pass filter and gaussian high pass filter so you see the names are same as what we had in low pass filters for ideal high pass filter the formula is h of u comma v is 0 if du comma v is less than or equal to d naught and it is 1 if d of u comma v is greater than d naught where d naught again is the cutoff frequency okay and then for butterworth high pass filter the formula is 1 by 1 plus d naught by d of u comma v raised to 2 raised to n where d naught is the cutoff frequency and n is the order of the butterworth uh, filter and Gaussian high pass filter 1 minus e raised to minus d square u comma v by 2 d naught square where d naught is the cutoff frequency so you see the formulas are similar to the low pass filter right and again the values d naught d of u comma v and all the other values are the same okay d of u comma v is the euclidean distance between the point u comma v and the center or origin Now an important point to note here is that when we are calculating h of u comma v we need d of u comma v right and the formula for that is u minus m by 2 the whole square plus v minus n by 2 the whole square where m and n are the order of the matrices or the dimensions of the matrix. So you know if you have a matrix and if you have the rows and columns then m represents the number of rows and n represents the number of columns okay so here what we are doing is basically this d of u comma v is calculated in the euclidean distance right because suppose if m is equal to 4 okay and n is equal to 4 then this would become a 4 by 4 matrix right the total image would be of the order 4 by 4 so if we uh, calculate 4 by 2 it would be 2 so the formula would have become u minus 2 the whole square plus v minus 2 the whole square that is we are calculating the distance between the point u comma v and 2 comma 2 okay so if it is a 4 by 4 matrix then the center would be 2 by 2 what we mean by this is that remember we are calculating uh, the original image and the multiplication of minus 1 raised to x plus y in the first step right so that, which means that we are bringing the origin of that image to the center 
So if we are bringing the origin of the original image to the center, then we also need to bring the origin of the mask to the center, right? So that is why we are calculating the distance between each and every point with the center 2 comma 2 so that we get the Euclidean distance between those and that is the value d of u comma v. Now we have a question here. Convert the given spatial domain image using Fourier transform and perform ideal low pass filter to smoothen the image. Choose D0 as 0.5 and show the step by step procedure for doing the same. So we have our input image here and now we are going to follow all the steps which we had discussed before. So the first step was to multiply the input image by minus 1 raised to x plus y to center the transform. Okay, so we have our input image here and when we calculate minus 1 raised to x plus y for each of these pixel values, then this is the pixel that we'll get. So basically how did we get this pixel? We just did minus 1 raised to 0 plus 0, minus 1 raised to 0 plus 1, minus 1 raised to 0 plus 2 and so on. Okay, so we did like that. And then that is how we got this matrix and now here we are not doing matrix multiplication we are doing pixel by pixel multiplication so this 1 into 1 we have written here 0 into minus 1 we have written here and so on and this is the matrix which we have got next step compute the DFT of the image from 1 so the DFT formula is f of u comma v is equal to kernel into input image into kernel transpose. So this is exactly what we have done. We have used a 4 by 4 kernel because our original image was 4 by 4 and then we have done the multiplication. Just use the formula and this was the image which we got in the previous step and this comes out to be the final value after multiplication. Now we have converted our image from spatial domain to frequency domain. The next step is to multiply f of u comma v with the filter function h of u comma v. Now what is the filter function for an ideal low pass filter? It is h of u comma v is equal to 0 if d of u comma v is less than or equal to d0. It is 1 if d of u comma v is greater than d0. So we had already discussed this right. Now calculating d of u comma v. This also we had discussed. This is basically we are using the Euclidean distance formula. And we do this since our image is 4 by 4. That's why we get m is equal to 4 and n equal to 4. Right? Because the order is 4 by 4. And that's why we calculate this. And we get u minus 2 the whole square plus v minus 2 the whole square the whole root. Okay. So this is the new formula. And let's understand what's happening over here see our mask okay is, a, is of this form okay one zero one 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 two one three two zero two one two two and two three and three zero three one 3 2 and 3 3 now if you remember we had discussed that we uh, in the first step when we are multiplying the original image with minus 1 raised to x plus y so that is basically we are bringing the 0 comma 0 origin to the center okay for 3 by 3 the center would be over here but for 4 by 4 we we'll take the center over here right so when we are taking the original image and bringing this origin to the center so we need to do that for the mask as well right so how can we do that this h of u comma v our filter function okay so what we are doing here is that we are just calculating we are just considering this as our origin and we are calculating the distances of all of these from the center so this distance 
this distance like that and so on. For every u comma v point, we are calculating the distance from this center. Okay, and that is how we are getting our mask. So here we are calculating the distance between u comma v from the center 2 comma 2 of the mask. Now I have done all the calculations for you. So this distance from each value of u comma v from 2 comma 2. So we have taken all the points and we have calculated the distance between these points and this point. Okay, using the same d of u comma v formula. And we have got these values. Okay, so these are the calculations. Now when we write it in the form of a matrix, we get this. Right, d of u comma v, we get it as this. And d naught is the value given, 0 0.5 is the value given in the question. Now using the h of u comma v formula, that is the formula which we had seen previously. Okay, we have uh, got this h of u comma v matrix. Okay, so what we did here is that we checked this value. We checked if it is greater than or equal to 0 0.5. It is, right? So we have written 1. Then 2.23 also we checked with this. It was greater. So we wrote 1. So similarly, we did for all of them. Okay, if we look at 0, it is le less than 0 0.5. So that's why we have written 0 here. Okay, so we have just used the ideal low pass filter formula and we have formed this H of u comma v matrix. Next comes the convolution. So here we took F of u comma v which we had got previously and then we took H of u comma v which we calculated and then we multiplied them. Now this multiplication again takes place pixel by pixel that is we are not doing matrix multiplication here just this pixel with this one this with this one so multiplication of this with this and so on and this is the matrix that we got now comes step 4 what are we doing in step 4 compute the inverse DFT of the result in 3 in step 3 so the IDFT filter or the IDFT inverse discrete Fourier transform mask is this okay so for calculating uh, so what are we doing here we are just converting our enhanced image back into the spatial domain so the formula which we use is 1 by 4 of kernel into image into 1 by 4 of kernel transpose so we have done exactly this now just check that the IDFT mask is different from that of the DFT mask okay the negative signs are different so keep that in mind and then once we do these multiplications then this is the result that we get now comes the last step so we need to multiply the result by minus 1 raised to x plus y remember we had brought the origin to the center so now we need to move the origin back to its original position. So that's why g of x comma y is equal to this is our value from the previous step. This is it means that it is the enhanced image. And then we are multiplying with minus 1 raised to x plus y. Again, the matrix multiplication takes place pixel by pixel. Okay, so this is not the original multiplication. We're just doing multiplication of the individual values. And this is the final image that we are getting. So this is our final enhanced image in the spatial domain. That's it for this lecture. I will see you in the next one.